Hey everybody, welcome back to the next part in my series on dialing in tones for our Line 6 Helix. This week I'm doing one that uh, kind of holds a special place for me. Um, one of my biggest influences actually growing up, and uh, you know it's kind of funny to say that because it doesn't, I don't think you can really hear it in my playing necessarily, but I was a huge Mark Knopfler fan and uh, in fact the very first compact disc, physical compact disc I ever bought was the Brothers in Arms album, and that's when CDs were just first coming out, whatever that was, 84 or 85 or whatever it was, we just got a CD player. And I remember putting on Money for Nothing and just going, wow, this is, you know, crazy big drum intro. And that was just really uh, life-changing for me uh, from a musical standpoint. So I really thought it would be a, a fun video to do, dialing in um, Knopfler or something close to reminiscent uh, of Mark Knopfler's tone on the, the title track of that album, Brothers in Arms, that, that beautiful, you know, neck pickup Les Paul tone that he has uh, going on on it. So I kind of researched it a little bit like I do with these. I don't always go with whatever amp uh, model uh, they used in the studio. Uh, sometimes, you know, for the reason that we don't have that particular amp model uh, in the Helix. But this time, from what I understand on uh, Brothers in Arms, the song, and also on uh, something I'll talk about a little bit later, also on Brothers in Arms, apparently he used the Marshall JTM 45 uh, with the Les Paul, as he's uh, quite well known for playing on certain songs, you know, between that and his strats, right? So I decided to just try that out, the JTM 45, and see uh, what was going on on that. So, um, so this was a really fun one to do. Uh, one little side point, I think you're going to notice, I'm going to start to separate these dialing in videos into two videos. The main video where I talk about, th like this, dialing the actual tone and how I got there. And then a secondary video where I actually use it in the mix and perform. And the reason I've had to do that is YouTube seems to be, I don't know if they're getting more strict with it, but they either, th there's always the potential of a, uh, of a video being blocked, uh, either in certain countries or altogether. And I'd hate to have uh, a whole video uh, where I talk about just dialing the tone in, uh, be removed or blocked, or even just have a copyright strike against it, um, just because I played, you know, a 30-second or 40-second clip of that song to let you hear what the tone sounds like in the in the uh, mix. So what I'm going to do is I'll do this dialing in, obviously, with a few little sound examples, but then I'm going to actually do the performance in the mix, and you might have noticed it's already up on my channel along with this video, where it's me just doing a little bit of an example of uh, the Brothers in Arms, some solo sections, as, uh, sort of as close as to, to Mark's playing as I could uh, do it. Um, which is not an easy task, mind you. He's a very, you know, he's not one of these fast shredder guys, but man, to get the feel that Mark has and the way he plays with his fingers, and that's where a lot of his tone comes from, it's very challenging. So I hope I even came close to doing it justice, you know. Uh, so anyways, that's the reason why you'll probably see um, a couple different videos every time I do these. I think that'll just be a better way to approach it so that there's no potential of these being blocked. If the performance gets blocked, it gets blocked and that's fine. Uh, at least you can see how the tone was dialed in and hear me do some uh, more generic samples of it. So anyways, let's get on to HX edit and sort of see what I did here. So what I did is I pulled up my normal template with my splits block, you know, I, I kind of go through that every time, but I usually start there, right? I think I'll just start telling you when I don't use it. Uh, compression at the end, EQ, which didn't get used heavily here, and I'll talk about that. Uh, some verb, a little touch of delay. Let's uh, take a look at what I did amp-wise here, though. So I went with the Brit J45 Norm. This tone is interesting, because, and Mark's playing is interesting here. If you notice, I did do something, though. I put a volume pedal at the beginning. Now, I, from what I understand, Mark is known for that, constantly kind of playing with this volume, you hear the volume swells throughout the Brothers in Arms solo, right? So my suspicion is that a lot of times he's he's constantly playing with that to f hit the front of the amp, uh, amp harder or less, right? Because you hear at times where this tone is very, uh, very overdriven and very searing quality to it, and then other times where it almost sounds very clean. So I almost have a feeling he's playing with that. Also, just with his amazing control with his thumb and fingers, the way he hits the strings can control that a lot too. So I did crank the drive and the master up full on this, bass on nine, mid on 8.1, treble on seven, presence on seven. I don't believe I touched the, the deeper uh, parameters here. Um, and that basically got me a good uh, working tone. Let me shut everything else off here. I went with the matching 412 Greenback 20 with a 121 uh, ribbon mic on it. Um, I'll just leave the reverb 
and I'll turn, I'll turn everything else off actually. Okay, so this is just the amp and the cab, and this is what the sound came as. Kind of flubby in the low end, a little out of control, maybe a little muddy sounding. Like an unprocessed ribbon mic, uh, 121 will tend to sound, especially when you have it up at one inch, right? Okay, so what I started doing then is I, I came in with my normal split crossover at 650 hertz, and how did I start controlling that? Well, everything above 650 hertz I added 2 dB to, and everything below I pulled out 1 dB. So by adding that in, let's hear how that affected the tone. Now it sounds like this. See how it's a little more a little more bite in the top, which you want. It's a it's a dark tone, but there's still some clarity in that top end. What I love about the way the amp is reacting here is if I hit like Mark does very soft with my thumb. As I dig in, we get that break. It's acting like a real tube amp. So anybody who says that, you know, the Helix or does, does not act like that, it absolutely does. This is so responsive. Also just rolling the, um, the volume control back. I was starting to get happy with that. Still a little bit tubby, maybe in the low end slightly. Now, one thing that uh, Mark is known for, and especially if you listen to that album on a song like, say, Money for Nothing, is to having that wah pedal kind of on halfway somewhere set and just not, not using it as, a, as a, a typical wah to get the sort of a waka waka sound out of it, you know, but more just as a tone control. And this is funny because somebody brought this up on YouTube and it, it is something I considered when I did my Brian May Bohemian Rhapsody tone because it, it did have that really sort of focused mid-range sound to it. And I thought about doing that. And at the time, I don't know why I was having some sort of brain fart, but I'm thinking the last thing I want to do is use uh, sort of a, a, a wah in, uh, set in one position be, because everybody will ask me like, where do I have to set the wah? And here I am thinking, okay, wait a second. I can just simply go in to a wah, and in this case, I picked the phasal wah. And when you bring the wah up, it comes in set by default to have it controlled by our expression pedal on the Helix. But simply by right clicking on that, and you know, I think it has either expression pedal one or two selected by default, I just selected none. Well, now, now I reselected it to expression pedal one. But if I just go to, so that's how it would come up by default, right? Um, now, if I just go to none, well, that's just going to bake that wah sound set at 50% right into the sound and there's no worries about it. So I don't know why I wasn't thinking that. Anyways, I, I probably still wouldn't have done on the Brian May tone as I, I kind of came around something else I was a little more happy with anyways, but sort of side point there. So we do have the wah. Let me turn that off though right now, because the other thing I noticed is I wanted a little more overdrive or at least the potential for a little more overdrive. Now for anybody using this, it's really going to depend on your guitar and pickups that you're using, how much output they are. They, they do have. Uh, maybe you won't need this extra gain stage if you have much higher output pickups. You'll be able to just get away with turning that off and going with just the amp overdrive. But there was times in this where I heard Mark kind of dig into a note up high like that. And it just kind of sustained and had more of a bite to it. So I chose the Minotaur with a tone setting of four and a half and a gain setting of three. So that's what this sounds like with that now. So that was starting to come nice, come around nicely. And, and again, we can control this by, by rolling our volume knob back and forth, right? Mm -hmm. 
very cleans up very nicely, all right? So. And again, I also have the volume control here if we want to use that, or volume pedal, sorry, if we want to use that. So that was that. Um, so that's with my split crossover on. Now let's add our reverb in. I put a nice, uh, what did we use here? A spring reverb, uh, 10 millisecond pre-delay, 3.8 decay, 35% mix. And adding that in sounded like this. might sound a little bit out of control. You're going to see what we do when we add the uh, sort of half on wah, right? Now, one thing, um, well, let's actually add that right now, okay? So we'll go in and we'll add the wah. So here's the sound again without it. Now with it on. So it's acting more like an EQ and a filter, right? Now, I played around a lot with this. I didn't re I found when I kept the mix control up at 100%. was kind of giving too much of that nasally sound that uh, the wah can give, right? So I played with the position of it and ultimately I decided to just pull this back to 35%. Now, some folks might feel that that's a little too low. You know, if you, we can all tweak this to our own liking, right? You could maybe go up to 50% on it. Let's see. All right. Like I said, I ultimately think I decided around 35. which I kind of liked. Okay, one big thing though. Now, when I'm doing these, uh, if you have watched the other video I performed it, I'm dialing these in to sound good in a mix, right? Because ultimately, I mean, I want them to sound good solo as well, but ultimately if we are playing these, we're gonna, either gonna be playing them maybe with the backing track or live or, you know, so you have to sound good in the mix. So I went with my normal compressor at the end, but if you notice, normally my default settings are kind of having the peak reduction and gain both at five. I noticed on this one that the peak reduction wasn't giving me that deep enough squash that I wanted. At five, it sounded like this. When I played that in the mix, it was poking through a little too much and I, I wanted to, Mark's guitar in the mix is quite loud, but it doesn't, ever sort of overtake the mix. It sits nicely in it. So I found by making a slight change and moving this up to six and a half. notice it just sits and sits nicer now so that was great the EQ on this one is gonna be a surprise to everybody uh, I didn't really do much other than a hundred Hertz low cut and a 10 kilohertz high cut so adding that in That low end's a little more controlled now. Okay. Um, what else, what else? I also, to help it sit in the mix, added just a bit of delay in here. So I went with, because it's such a slow tempo, the tempo isn't in around 80 beats per minute, I have it set up here, so I set it to an eighth note. 
right? I didn't want uh, it to be too long and drawn out, but I also want it to sit in the mix nice. Feedback of 13 and a mix of 26. Now, it might sound like a lot uh, when I'm playing it solo, but in the mix, it just blends in nicely, and especially since it's tied to the tempo, it's not gonna be as noticeable either. <laughs> Starting to come around nice. Now I got there and I was pretty happy with that. I liked that tone, but still there was something in the mix where it was just poking through a little too much and not sitting nicely enough. So the one thing I did do is I came, nothing with the Helix, but I came to my guitar and I took the, the, the tone control and I just backed that off with the neck pickup. I backed that off from 10 down to about seven. So if I do that, it's gonna sound like this. <laughs> happy with that at that point right so that came to a point where I said you know what enough playing with this it sounded nice in the mix and you'll hear that uh, please watch the other video just so you can kind of hear what this does sound like in the mix the other thing I want to bring up the mix that I'm using is from my good friends over at bobby's backing tracks.com so that that backing track is courtesy of them anybody who's looking for backing tracks check these guys out bobby makes the best backing tracks out there real real musicians uh, played impeccably the mixes are amazing this just w was beautiful to play over top of. So check him out. You know, he has a lot to offer at his website. So a uh, great guy to deal with. Um, the other neat thing about this, I realized after when I was researching this, you know, it said, well, the song Money for Nothing also had kind of a similar setup. Gibson Les Paul, half on wah, uh, JTM 45 amp. So I thought, what happens if I just simply do this? Turn the delay off, don't touch anything else. Roll my tone back up, switch to the bridge position. Haven't touched anything else, okay? Hopefully that's not enough for YouTube to, to yank this, but <laughs> I don't know if they're gonna, but um, anyways. You know, I, I didn't even compare that to the original, but right away I went, man, I could totally use this in a live situation if I had to play that. Totally not Mark Knopfler-esque. Okay, sorry about that. Um, and again, neck pickup, roll the tone off. And I'm back to that brothers in arms S sound. If I, you know, again, if I just turn the delay on. Great tone all around, and uh, it could possibly work for both songs. So, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm gonna throw this up on custom tone like normal. I'd love to hear your feedback on it. Again, uh, standard disclaimer I'm not claiming this is matching any tone as I am for the whole series. I'm just trying to get as close to it as possible. I have to say that because I always get some comments. Um, 
that, you know, it isn't exact. I'm never professing it to be. I, I, like I've said before, I don't really think that's totally possible to match. There's just too many variables involved, right? So uh, one important thing, though, in playing any of Mark's stuff is right here. Um, if you can learn to finger pick this stuff, it goes a long way. Uh, for instance, if I was to take um, the setting I was using for uh, Brothers in Arms and just play with a pick... <laughs> you don't hear that pick attack coming through like you uh, would with the pick, right? So anyways, uh, I hope you guys liked that. Uh, please like and share the video. Subscribe if you guys haven't already and have a lot more like this coming. Uh, check out, be sure to check out. I'll put the link in the description below to the other video where I actually use this to perform in the mix. I hope it's not too much bouncing around, but uh, um, I hope you guys enjoy that. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for the support and the kind words and comments. And uh, I'll be back soon with some more content. And I uh, thank you guys for, uh, for tuning in. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Take care, ciao.